Hey, Jay here with yet another tire change video. A uh, lot of guys like these, a lot of guys struggle with changing their rear tire. Today we have a 19 inch rear tire. This is off our RM125 project. Uh, we got a uh, MX32 on here. We're going to switch to an MX11, which is a sand mud tire. Really good all around tire for those conditions and crosses over pretty well, surprisingly well for a lot of people. So we're going to show you how to change that thing right now. Okay, so first thing we do is remove the cap and the nut. We back them all the way off. A lot of people have the nut down on the rim. That's a big mistake, have it touching the cap. So you back that all the way off, and then we'll remove our valve core. You have a valve core tool, you can get it from any auto parts store. Remove it all the way out and let all the air out. Then at this point, we're going to remove our rim lock nut. We're going to back it all the way to where there's just a couple threads holding it on. So at this point, we're going to start with our tire spoons. We use these Motion Pro spoons and we just start pushing down on the tire just like so. We have our spoon facing up. These Motion Pro spoons work really well. Boom. Now our bead is all the way knocked off. We're going to flip it over to the disc side. You saw I started with the sprocket side up. I'll start just a little way away from the rim lock. Push it down. And I'm pushing down with my left hand as well. You can see our tire is all the way off the bead. Now at this point, we'll start just a little ways away from the, the rim lock. And I just get the tire spoon just in there enough. I don't go in too far. And pull it up, tuck it under the rear rotor. And I want to knock with my hands or the tire spoon, knock the tire off the bead again. It crawled up a little bit. I felt it there. Hold my body against the tire. I took another bite about two and a half, three inches away. We use three tire spoons. You can get away with, with less. Got this nice shape to it. Doesn't go in too far. Again, just going to go about two and a half, three inches away. And when you push down, you don't want to go in too far because you can easily damage your tube by going in too far. And if you have a pointed tire spoon or people try to use a screwdriver even, or you, you'll easily damage your, your tube. So now, as we keep going here, now I'm down to one spoon, working my way around, still about three inches apart. Now the tire is all the way off. And I simply flip it over. At this point, a lot of guys want to pull the tube out of the tire. You don't have to do that. Um, just simply do the same process you did up on the other side. You can get a little further apart on these bites since the tire's looser. Now we don't need two tire spoons, get about half the tire off, work our way around just like so. And with my body, I kind of push on it when I get to the end here. Now I have a big opening here. At this opening, I put my spoon in here, and I push down on the tire with the tube in the tire, pull it off just like so. First thing I'll do at this point is I'll inspect, in this case, the tire has a, a band on it, which is what comes stock on a lot of wheels. So I'll check to make sure that the band is still in good shape. Or if it has tape on it that none of the spokes, nipples or anything are showing through. So in this case, our band looks good. We're going to put this down here and get ready to install our tire. So we've pulled our tube out of our old tire. We're going to put our core back in here. One of the first things I like to do so we don't, don't forget or lose our core. Tighten it up real good. Now we have our new MX-11 tire here. This tire is intended for sand and muddy conditions. We have some tracks out here in California uh, that are pretty sandy, uh, Kuiya, really good uh, there. Glen Helen early in the morning can still work really well there. And it's fairly durable for being a sand mud tire. So we like to run this in those kind of conditions. At this point, we're gonna get a little baby powder. We spray it in here like so, not a ton of it. And this just helps the, the tube and tire from chafing as much and bonding together. Now I spin that baby powder all the way around the tire. So at this point, I throw my tire up here, throw the tube inside the tire. Now a lot of people don't, you know, they're afraid not to do that, but this is the easiest way. Now I'm gonna air, air up the tire. My tire's firm, just like so. 
and you want it just about like that. If you can see that, that's about how much air. It's hard, there's no way to measure the air, but that's about what it should feel like. Then at this point, I'm gonna use some tire paste, wipe it around the tire with a sponge. And for tire paste, a lot of guys ask me what we use. We, a lot of guys will use Windex and soap and WD-40 and all those things. We prefer to use a good tire paste that'll dry and do a good job helping you mount and not cause any problems. We use this, this tub here from Hunter Engineering. They make tire paste. I buy it from guys uh, that deliver to tire shops. Kind of hard to find. And there's also one called Meyer that does the same thing. Stuff works really well. So now at this point, we're ready to install our tire. This tire obviously is directional. Uh, this is a tire you couldn't get away with running backwards or you wouldn't be going anywhere. So in this case, we look at our direction. We've got our sprocket on the bottom. We're pointed in the right direction right now. So we're going to pick up our, our tube. You always want to ch check for directional tires whenever you're doing tires. Uh, you've got a 50% chance of getting right, but I find if you don't check, you get wrong about 90% of the time. So I put the, the valve stem through the, the rim hole, and I got the nut on there, and I'm dialing that down about half, three quarters of the way. Now at this point, I'm pushing my body against the tire, and I'm feeling underneath that it gets in there, and I push down, and I got about two thirds of the tire on the rim right now, just by doing that. So now I grab a spoon, hold underneath, and push like so. Now I got about 80, 90% of the tire, and I just, last bite, I just pop it on. So see, now we're all the way on, and I flip it over, like so. So now that we flipped it over, uh, next process is to simply, people will go, how do you get the rim lock on? It's, we don't deal with having to fish our fingers in. We just simply get the rim, the, the tire spoon, and we put it in this position with the cupping shape up here, like so, pop it up, and then hit the rim lock down, and then exaggerated, we kind of look like this. We're walking it on, and we just walk it over the rim lock, get my left hand, push up the rim lock, and then pop it like this. Now the rim lock's on, everything's good here. We flip it back over, and we're ready to start installing our tire. And I know I make this look a lot easier than what it can appear, because you know I do a lot of tires, so that's one of the things that makes it easier. At this point, I push down two spoons, dropped in my bead buddy. Again, Motion Pro makes that. Um, pop it on like so. You don't want to go in too far, easily damage your tube. So you're taking bites about two or three inches apart, and I'm kind of pushing down with my left hand as I'm going around. Now, I'm right-handed. I don't know how much this would change for a, a lefty. Um, lefties tend to be smarter and usually can afford to pay someone to do their own tires, right? So, simple deal. Like that, grab your spoon, pop it in there, like so. Now. I like to make sure that you get the bead all the way down so these last bites you don't scratch your rim too bad or anything. You can kind of push up with your body like this and help get that thing in there without scratching your rim. Pop it down and sometimes you can just hold down. At this point you can hold down, grab your bead buddy out. You're, now you're ready to air up the tire. So I've airing up the tire. We're completely on the bead here. So now I want to flip it over check the other side. You gotta check both sides. If you don't, inevitably, you won't have the bead on one side. So I'll wipe up my excess goo here. I'll tighten the rim lock down first thing. There's no torque setting, or at least I'm not aware of a torque setting for the rim lock. We just kind of crank it. You don't want to get it too tight because you can damage your rim, but just to where it kind of stops and just about like so, simple deal. Now, I back off the nut away from the rim like I was telling you, so you don't have any problems there. So now we're going to set our pressure in our tire. We've got our Motion Pro, it's a digital gauge. And for motocross tires, um, motocross tires like so, on, on this kind of tire you're going to be anywhere from, let's say 12, 13 range for most conditions. And that'll take care of most of your conditions. You're going to set your pressure like so, you got your cap, you're going to dial that down. Right here we have our works connection cool metal cap. And we dial that down and then we bring the nut to where it touches the cap. So that's about all there is. Um, you can go tear up some sand. Uh, Southwick, a lot of Florida tracks, um, and so a few things out west here. So 
works, in a, uh, works really well in those conditions. I wouldn't suggest running it in any harder pack conditions later in the day. Uh, you, you know, can tear up the tire, it wouldn't last you as long. So that's all there is to it.